Hello again everybody and in this video um, we are going to continue our exploration of while loops uh, to write a program um, that uh, calculates multiplication tables or times tables. So let's uh, dive straight in and we'll create a new Java class as always. Okay, so we'll just call this main class main and uh, then we'll go in and create our main method to contain our code as always always okay so let's have a quick look at the at this program which is going to use while loops so um, this program um, is going to um, basically prompt the user to enter in uh, the required station um, of each multiplication table or times table so for example seven to work out the stations of the seven times table um, and we're going to be using a while loop so Remember that while loops can, can, can repeat a certain block of code um, again and again um, until a certain condition um, remains true or while a certain condition remains true. So this program calculates times tables, multiplication tables, um, prompts the user to enter in the required station of the times table. Um, we'll use the scanner class for that. Um, and uh, we also see use of a counter. So the counter actually is used uh, to count up and actually it's used as part of the um uh, as part of the um uh, multiplication um as part of the arithmetic uh, to work out each um uh, multiplication so let's have a quick look at this now so first of all as always um, i know that i'm going to be using the scanner so let's import uh, the scanner so import java.util.scanner Okay, so the scanner, it's like an add-on utility um, that you can import and use in your programs um, for basic uh, text input through the console. Um, and also, uh, just at the top of our program as well, we'll just initiate the scanner. So while we're dealing with the scanner, we'll just initiate it as well. So as always, scanner, scanner equals new scanner. Okay, and that's for system inputs okay so effectively what that does is it creates a new instance of the scanner in memory ready for us to use in our program so for this uh for this program um, we're going to be using a couple of um, variables um, so the first variable that we'll need is a variable to hold the required station of each times table that the user requires. So for example, two times table, three times table. So we'll just call that station, okay? Um, and what we'll do as well, and we'll just use that to store um, required um, times table station. Okay, so, okay, it's probably comment in there. And we'll also use a pointer. Okay, so we'll just have another integer called counter, um, and we may initialize that in a moment. But we'll come to that. So we'll just say um, uh, variable used to count up. Okay, um, and what we'll do is as well, we'll ask the user to key in their required times table. So we'll do system out line, and we'll just say welcome to the times table program. And we'll say, please enter your, please enter required times table. Okay, so they can enter in their um, required times table. So that's fine. So what we'll do is we'll just uh, take in or store their choice in the station variable. So we'll say station, is equal to uh, scanner next int. Okay, so that will store their required station. So I think we've probably got enough here to get started with our if statement. I'm just going to initialize the counter um, at zero. Okay, um, and we'll just say variable used to count up start at zero. And we'll just go ahead and um, start our um, while loop. So what we'll say is we'll say while counter is less than or equal to 12. Okay, so we'll only calculate the first 12 items in each uh, times table. So while counter 
is less than 12, what we'll say is we'll say system out, okay, system out, print line, and we'll say, um, we'll say station, but we'll say counter times station, and we'll keep repeating that, okay, and what we'll do is we'll increment the counter by one, counter equals counter plus one, and uh, yeah, we'll just um, observe the results. Now, we're not finished quite yet. Uh, we've got a little bit more to add to this program, but we'll just check that it is working so far. So we'll run the code as always, and we'll just keep an eye on the console. So let's make the console slightly bigger. So welcome to the times table program. Please enter required times table. So we'll go for the seven times table first of all, okay? So there we have the stations of the seven times table. So zero, seven, 14, 21, 28, and so on, okay? Right up to uh, seven times 10, seven times 11, seven times 12, which is 84. Okay, so we know that the basics are working. What we can do is we can actually add to this program to make the user output um, a bit more user friendly. Um, so what we can say is we can say uh, counter plus times, and then the station is and then counter times station. Now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to pop that um, operation in round brackets just to separate it out from the rest of the output of the system out print line. And uh, we can run this program now. So again, we will enter in our required times table. So let's go for seven once again. And we have one, zero times seven is zero. One times seven is seven. 2 times 7 is 14, and so on, right up until 11 times 7 is 77, and 12 times 7 is 84. And what we can do as well is we can actually put a little message, just about front line, okay, just to indicate that the loop has finished. Okay, so we can say times table complete. Okay, so it's actually happening here. We'll run that again just to double check. Let's go for a different one this time. We'll go for, let's see if we can go for the nine times table. And there we have it. Okay, so zero times nine is zero and so on, right up to 12 times nine times table complete. Now, the reason it stops at that point is because we're saying we're only looping. So this loop is only repeating, it's only active as long as the counter is less than or equal to 12. So when the counter hits 12, when it hits 13, okay, that is uh, basically more than 12, okay, so the condition is no longer true, okay, so the, the counter stops um, at that point. Um, so yeah, so there we go. So as always, um, I'm just going to finish commenting this program. Um, so, yep, so we'll just say that line imports the scanner. Um, we initialize the scanner at this point. Okay, I've already commented this bit. So these variables are for storing the required times table station that the user has chosen and the counter, which starts at zero. Um, we'll scan in. Okay, scan in the user inputs. And this is the actual loop. Okay, so that's the loop. And we'll say that we stop when we get to 13. Okay. And we'll say that this line here confirms that the times table is complete okay so there we go so there we have it so just another example there of a while loop being used as part of a program that creates multiplication tables um, or times tables um, based on the user input um, i hope that was useful um, thank you for watching this video uh, remember to keep practicing and uh, thanks again and we'll see you again soon so bye for now